During the latter part of the 19th century, the natives of the Philippines started their revolution to finally end the three centuries of Spanish rule in the archipelago. This ended in the proclamation of the First Republic in Asia in 1898. Peace however was short-lived because the Filipinos found themselves fighting the U.S. in the Philippine-American War, who were initially considered as allies but it turned out they also have their own dream of building their own colonial empire. In today's video, we will be talking about the last Spanish holdout in the Philippines, men cut off from communications with their own government and military, these Spaniards continued their defense against the Filipino forces until in 1899 during the Philippine Revolution and into the Philippine-American War. This is the Siege of Baler. Baler is a town located on the eastern seaboard of Luzon, about 225 kilometers or 140 miles from the capital, Manila. The Philippine Revolution against the Spanish colonial rule started in 1896. In September 1897, the Spanish garrison in Baylor consisted of 50 cazadores under Lieutenant Jose Moda, their task is to prevent the revolutionaries from receiving smuggled arms. Moda's forces were attacked on the night of October 4 by Filipino revolutionaries under Novicio, killing Mota and six other Spaniards, wounding several and capturing 30 Spanish Mauser rifles. The initial phase of the revolution ended with the signing of the Pact of Biak Nabato in 1897. In 1898, with resumption of the revolution, Baler was still reachable only by ship or by traversing on foot through nearly impassable jungle trails across the Sierra Ramadre mountain range that were often washed out by torrential tropical rains. During this period of the revolution, the Philippines was involved in the Spanish-American War, and the Filipino rebels allied themselves with the American forces. Baler was garrisoned by a 50-man detachment of the 2nd Expeditionary Battalion Cazado Res of the Phil under the command of Captain Enrique de las Morenas, as the district political military governor. On June 1, 1898, Las Morenas began work to dig a well, stock food supplies and ammunition, and to fortify the church compound of San Luis de Losa in Baler's town square against a possible attack. The church was the only stone building in the area. By the 26th of June, 1898, it was noticed that the town residents were leaving. And by the next day, the city was surrounded. Then on the night of 30th, 800 Filipino troops under Teodorico Luna attack, and the garrison troops fell back to the church. The first few days of the siege saw several attempts by the Filipinos to get the Spanish to surrender by leaving letters, while they surrounded the church with trenches. The Spanish soldiers had to endure confinement in a small, hot, and humid space. As the siege progressed, their food supply began to run out through usage and spoilage supplementing their supplies through foraging. Enemy rifle fire did cause casualties but diseases such as beriberi, dysentery, and fevers did more damage. The first Spaniard to die was Gomez Carreño, the town priest. In September, Lieutenant Alonso was killed. In November, Captain Las Morenas died to beriberi and command fell to Lieutenant Saturnino Martin Cerezo. For several times, the Spanish made raids to burn nearby houses to deprive the Filipinos of much-needed cover. The Filipinos attempted to drive them out by setting fires beside the church wall but were repelled and had their timber captured. By mid-November, having failed to dislodge the Spanish defenders, Villacorta, under a flag of truce, left newspapers on the church steps that told of Spain's planned withdrawal from the archipelago and that the Spanish-American conflict has ended. Cerezo considered this just a deception. Villacorta brought in Spanish civilians and finally a uniformed Spanish officer left behind to wrap up Spain's affairs on the island, to no avail. By November 22, a total of 145 days since the siege began, 14 Spanish soldiers already died of disease. Only 38 soldiers remain, 23 were affected, with the rest being sick. The Filipinos also had suffered casualties, mostly from rifle fire the Spanish were able to inflict on them from their protected firing positions. The next year brought more Spanish emissaries to Baler, but again Cerezo turned them away. In April, the Americans intervened when Commander Charles S. Sperry, commanding the USS Yorktown, attempted to rescue the Spanish. By this time, the Philippines had been at war with the United States since February. 
Five Americans on a reconnaissance mission were killed due a Filipino ambush. A lieutenant and nine others were captured and held prisoner by the Filipinos until they were rescued in December. In May 8, Filipino artillery shelling hit an improvised cell that held three Spaniards who had attempted to desert earlier in the siege. One of them, al qaeda Bayona, ran out and joined the Filipino troops. This was a blow to the Spanish as Bayona had important intelligence to share about their dire conditions and helped fire the cannon on the church to good effect. On May 28, 1899, there was yet another attempt to get Cerezo and his men to surrender. Again, another Spanish officer, a lieutenant colonel, appeared under a flag of truce and was turned away. He had brought recent Spanish newspapers, which Cerezo initially dismissed as fake, until he read an article concerning a close friend's posting, plans of which only he knew, convincing him the newspapers were genuine and that indeed Spain had lost the war. On June 2, Cerezo and his troops surrendered to the Filipinos, finally ending the siege that lasted 337 days or 11 months, from July 1, 1898 until June 2, 1899. General Emilio Aguinaldo, President of the First Philippine Republic, decreed that they were to be considered, not as prisoners of war but as friends. He also added, the valor, determination, and heroism with which that handful of men, cut off and without any hope of aid, defended their flag over the course of a year. Three months later, on September 1st, the survivors including Martin Cerezo, arrived in Barcelona where they were received and honored as heroes.